Good evening, Garden Club members. Uh, we welcome you this evening to our show, um, our program, uh, and we're uh, doing the link here from Pelham, New Hampshire, uh, by the Thistle Communication. Uh, they have kindly let us use their facility. My son Josh is directing it with the help of Matt Thistle. So we really appreciate their, their effort and their time spent in um, doing this for us. We hope you'll enjoy it. Um, so let's start with some uh, business. Number one, our board met uh, November 4th, and we're working very hard uh, to continue this year and on into 2021. And so far, we're doing quite well. Uh, first, I want to uh, remind you of uh, our second vice president, Maggie Haggerty's unfortunate incident at home. She fell uh, a little over a week ago and fractured her back. Uh, an update just as of this evening, she's doing very well. She'll be going home tomorrow uh, and her spirits are good and she will have a lengthy recovery. So she would appreciate uh, any well wishes from all the members. Uh, the club will be sending um, a floral arrangement to her just to welcome her home. In regards to Joan Crawford's memorial, uh, with thanks to Judy Colburn and um, Sue Kramer, we have purchased a, a very heavy stone bird bath uh, to put in our garden at Ipswich River Park. Uh, and um, we will, uh, I think, put it in tomorrow. They're going to deliver it. Um, Judy, Charlene, and Joe Malik are going to deliver it. If anyone wants to go and be there for it, feel free. We're planning to uh, wait and have a memorial service in the spring, much like we did for Dot Pecos with refreshments, and, and just talk about all of the contributions that Joan gave to the North Reading Garden Club. Our nominating committee uh, is going to begin work after the first of the year. Uh, we'll be looking for uh, all of the officers for a two-year term. Uh, if they call you or if you'd like to volunteer, we would be uh, very grateful. It's you, the members, who keep the club going, and we certainly want to do that. So we'd appreciate any assistance with that. The Festival of Trees uh, is going to continue. It will be virtual, but our Garden Club have chosen uh, not to participate this year due to the um, restrictions. So hopefully next year we'll be able to do that again. Our boxwood tree uh, is going to take place, but in a different format. Um, there will be Judy and Sue, Judy Colburn and Sue Kramer are going to get uh, a full package available and you can purchase it and do it yourself. Or they're going to be making them uh, per order uh, for you and you can just purchase it. I believe the price is $25 and you can purchase it for your holidays and you know it lasts for many, many weeks and it's just lovely to have in your home for Christmas holiday. Um, the uh, board has been considering um, a number of ideas uh, for our Christmas tradition in lieu of our wonderful uh, Christmas party. We had last year at Margie Salt and she had volunteered this year. So unfortunately we can't do it. So we're trying to work out an ornament swap. Perhaps something like have everyone who wants to participate drop them off at one location and then the board members will hand them out. Um, to um, another uh, Garden Club member. But if you have any ideas on that, once again, um, let us know. We are planning our meeting for 2021. Um, and for now, we have chosen not to cancel the uh, silver tea in hopes that some of the restrictions will be lifted Right now, the restrictions of how many could meet at the, at the Congo and, and um, how many we could get in uh, 
to attend because, as you know, it's an expensive show that we have and we have to pay that. So we'd have to make it worth our while. Chances are we won't, but we will let you know uh, at a later date. Um, I hope I've covered all of our current issues at the club. If any of you have any ideas, you know the board uh, welcomes them. Uh, we're here tonight uh, to present a wonderful, well-known floral designer. Uh, and she does shows all over Massachusetts. Uh, her name is uh, Thelma Schoenman. Many of us that went to the joint meeting last year in Stoneham, we got to see her. And as soon as she finished with her performance, we went up and grabbed her for this year. So uh, she is going to be here. She's made a lot of uh, arrangements and, and adjustments to be here with us tonight. And we're looking forward to that. Uh, Thelma is a, national, a nationally accredited flower show judge. She served as director of floral concerns in the Acton Garden Club for over 20 years, where she taught many floral design classes and is still teaching. She's a teacher in the Sogetsu School of Ikebana and a membership chairman of the Ikebana International Boston Chapter. She has exhibited at the Museum of Fine Arts, the Art and Bloom, for 22 years and at the Worcester Art Museum. Thelma retired in January um, of 17 after 20 years of owning her own flower shop in Concord, Mass., the colony florist, and now enjoys presenting floral design programs for garden clubs all over New England. Tonight, uh, our theme is Through the Holidays, and Thelma is going to design uh, six or seven floral arrangements. And when the uh, meeting is over, uh, we will have them all lined up here. And my helpers tonight, and I thank them too, um, Ann Lundell and uh, Susan Wilson Goucher, they'll be doing a raffle, and we'll draw the hats out and call your name. and. If you're lucky enough to win one of them, uh, the board will call you and we'll get them delivered to your house. So tonight I'm very pleased uh, to offer our wonderful program with Thelma Showman. So with that, Thelma, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Thelma. Um, we had a lot of fun talking, Zelma and Thelma, by the way, so I feel like we're good friends already. And thank you for inviting me to share some holiday ideas with you. Uh, when I had the flower shop, I felt like my neighbors expected me to always be decorated. So that wasn't always the case because when everybody else wanted decorations, it was pretty busy. So what I decided was as long as I had something different on my door, I looked at it decorated. So tonight I'm going to start with the door and I'm going to lead you through the house and hopefully you will have some ideas for your holiday decorations and I've done them mostly in the fall uh, colors tonight but you can see how easily you can switch them into the other holidays um, and winter. So on the door I started with a floral cage which looks like this. So you can see it's hanging behind there. And I wanted to put a long lasting green on it. Uh, and these, this West Coast Arborvitae is awesome. It is something, uh, it's kind of graceful and it has gold on it. So it's a transitional green and it lasts for a long time. So I kind of outlined uh, the piece with that West Coast Arborvitae with the gold on it. And then I, you know, I was thinking about the holidays and what do we think about besides flowers? And maybe some of you don't think about flowers, but you always think about food. So I thought in all of our designs, I would add some food. Uh, flowers are fewer calories, but you know, we have to indulge sometime. So I'm going to add some apples to this design. Uh, they will last for a long time as long as we don't have too many fr freezing nights and then it thaws out and then they kind of shrivel up. So I think this will last quite a long time. I have to put skewers 
in the bottom, and usually two of them uh, because otherwise the apple would be spinning around. And I used to have to watch that when I had a driver because, uh, you know, I never knew how he would go around the corners and um, spin the apples out of the designs. So I'm going to put in the apples, kind of balancing the the um, arrangement. And then because it is um, fall, we're going to add some fall leaves, just a little touch, so that once um, you know Thanksgiving's over and you want to get rid of the fall leaves, you can just pull them out. And you could leave this up until you have um, a wreath or whatever you put on your door later. But this will also uh, be fine for the whole winter. Uh, you don't have to water it or anything. It'll freeze just like, uh, you know, a flower pot would and you won't and stay in place. So I'm just going to add some color with these uh, treated oak leaves. And then um, I thought we'd need a little whimsy. Uh, these Craspedia or Billy buttons um, won't they're already dry, so they will just hang in there throughout the season. So we'll add those in for a little bit of gold. And you notice that um, the pods that I've put in, I sprayed gold. I do that for a couple of reasons. One is it gives it a little more pizzazz. Also, it, it's good for the transition of the season. And then the other reason is that it won't uh, soak up the water as much. These are sponge mushrooms. And yes, I said sponge. So they will soak up water if you don't give them a spray. And I am dangerous with my uh, 24 karat gold spray can. So anything that gets in my way gets a little spray. So we're going to put um, the gold coloring throughout and a little bit long here. I forgot to mention that this uh, circle part of it is kiwi. My friend has a kiwi patch, I call it. It's um, rather like an Eskimo's igloo. It's so big. I think the, the woodchucks live under there. And we go and have to prune it, and I love working with it. Every time I cut it, I curl it right away so that I can use it curled. And sometimes they look like this. So I've kind of curled some three branches together and put them in a circle. If you want to make something like this, it's good to uh, use a uh, grapevine wreath, take it apart, and just use the curled part of it. You can tuck it in here and there. Because of this pandemic, I've uh, devised a system that you could use so that you don't need to buy a cage. If you have a strawberry, uh, you know how you buy strawberries in those plastic containers? You can take the lid off. It's a little bit bigger than this size, but you could put a wire through it, put your oasis on, tape it on, and make your door piece in that. So you don't even have to have a floral cage. Um, I, think, I think we're finished. Let me add just one more little pod here in the center. And down here to give, me, give us a little bit more depth. So I think you've got a, cent uh, a piece for your door that could last you through the whole winter, if you wish. Just take out the leaves and you're ready for um, Christmas. So take that away. Now I always like to have a companion piece on my step. So I kind of desi designed this so that it would be a companion piece to the door piece. I've started out with kiwi, as you can see. I kind of uh, wired uh, some 
shapes together so that I end up with kind of a little armature there. And I use some long-lasting greens. Um, Salau is a uh, lemon leaf is the common name for it. It will last and when it dries, it looks kind of like a gray green and it's really a pretty color. I added again some of our leaves, uh, treated leaves so that they would uh, kind of go along with the door piece. And this time we'll add a different um, vegetable. And I don't like to do this too much, but I've had some little accidents with some real pumpkins. So I hope you'll forgive me for using some of these lightweight pumpkins. Plus, I don't think the um, squirrels or the woodchucks or whatever will enjoy the taste of these. So I'm going to tuck those in. I've done just the same thing. I made um, a stem with actually some kiwi, but you also need to secure these in your arrangement. And I'm going to put one up high in between, in among my armature. And I have these um, interesting pods, which I actually found at Trader Joe's. So, um, you know, you might be able to find dried, interesting dried things at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Trader Joe's, or other places when you're shopping. I don't, I don't think we shop as much as we have been, but uh, if you venture out, you can find some interesting things still. I'm going to add some more of the kiwi just to keep the rhythm going here. So I've got all kinds of circles. And I think I do need some more orange to bring out the orange on the other side. So I'm just going to add in a little pumpkin. I thought these were cute. Um, I do teach Ikebana now and we're always being asymmetrical. So I tend to not be uh, traditional. I know that I said we wanted to put these outside. This week we could leave these outside and they would be perfect. Um, but maybe you want to put this inside in your, on your hearth or wherever it would fit. And I thought these uh, beautiful spider mums, Fuji mums, um, would just tie the whole thing together and give it some life. I hadn't been to the flower market for so long, so it was a real treat to go and buy all these beautiful flowers this week. So I've had a lot of flower fun. Like I said, I appreciate you inviting me to have fun with you tonight. So I'm going to tuck in. I have Oasis in here, you can see. So I'm starting to tuck in the um, mums. And you know, if it gets really cold, they certainly won't hold up outside, but actually my mums were doing really well outside until the rabbits decided they were quite tasty and I lost my mum plants before they froze. So I was thinking I might be able to manage through the whole season, but not quite. And you know, sometimes it was very aggravating because they would take the buds off and then they actually wouldn't eat them. They would just leave them laying there on the ground. So I think we have maybe room for one more. The other green that I actually put in here uh, is uh, the seeded eucalyptus and it will also dry for you. So this is a pretty long lasting arrangement and if you put it on your uh, hearth inside, it'll be very long lasting. If you put it outside, you may lose the mums pretty quickly. Although, it doesn't sound too bad. So, I think this would be a beautiful um, piece on your 
doorstep. Thank you. Okay, now, you know, around the holidays, at least we used to, I don't know what's going to happen this year, but it may be even more surprising, actually. Uh, somebody says, oh, sure, I'll come over. And then you say, oh, no, I don't have any centerpiece. I don't have any flowers. So you go into the kitchen and you see what you have available. And so I cleaned out my vegetable drawer and I didn't know what container to use. So I um, ha have this uh, vegetable stand that you know you can keep your vegetables in. So I decided that would work. So I put a liner in the bottom and I put lemon leaf around it so you wouldn't see the, um, the container or the oasis. I took all the peppers out of the drawer and I put them in there and um, if you win this one, you can make pepper relish or something because I haven't even poked them with the uh, skewers. I did, did have some habanero peppers, the little tiny um, orange ones. And I did have to wire those with little wire sticks so that they would stand up a little bit taller than, the, than just putting them in there. And then to add some texture, I put in eryngium or thistle and uh, some leptospermin that as a green to, to um, connect all of the uh, vegetables together. So that's the bottom. Now for the top, I kind of ran out of vegetables in my drawer. So I love all the uh, kale you can buy. And a lot of times they will have leaves all the way down the stems. I usually take most of them off, just peel them off. And when you're finished doing that, just take your hand and pull it back. And you've got a flower that looks pretty much like an open rose or something that's exotic. I, I like to make up names and tell people what they are instead of telling them it's kale. Although now kale is so popular, it's probably a good thing to do. So we will put some kale in the top. As you can see, I, I started out by putting some cinnamon sticks, long cinnamon sticks, and I used the holes in my container to be a mechanic. And then uh, this is actually real bay leaf. I have a plant uh, of bay leaf because it's very useful in, in flower arranging and so I um, cut a bit of that off. My poor house plants, they really can't survive too long without being trimmed. Um, so, but that one is going to be very useful. So I'm going to put in the kale on the top, different heights. And then to pull up the um, bright colors of the peppers, we will use some Gerberas. These were, uh, I love all the names of the Gerberas. This is a beautiful orange one and its uh, name was Bueno. So I thought, okay, we're good with that since it means good, so. Uh, we'll tuck in some Gerberas. I'm sure you have those hanging around, so. Um, I have straws on them because I wanted to make sure that um, since it's going to be maybe a day or two till you get the arrangements, they will still be perky, very perky. But these little mini Gerberas usually last for quite a while. In fact, I'm going to take this one off because I like them when they're kind of whimsical. And then we'll add some um, little peppers. It's always fun to have different textures. So the smooth and the rough 
the curly and the straight, you know, all kinds of uh, contrasts. So I'm just going to even drop some in. These are the funniest shaped. So, you know, even if you, okay, so you're surprised by your visitors, and if you don't know what you're having for dinner, then they can look at the arrangement. I always find that as a good uh, deterrent. All right, we're going to be a little asymmetrical again by putting three over here and uh, just one in each of those. And then um, we'll bring up the thistle or the eryngium. You know, blue always does something to flower arrangement. I, it just really makes it sing. So we'll add a little bit of that. And this could sit on your counter, you know, so that you can uh, put out the hors d'oeuvres and it's like a buffet, buffet table arrangement. And I think that that will be, add a little bit of fall color with some kind of rusty mums, which kind of ties everything together. They have a little bit of yellow in the center. It's also a different texture. I'm trying to design from the back. When Ikebana uh, teachers have to design from the back, I'm glad they don't say that the uh, Western designers have to do that, but it's kind of fun to do if you can. So, Okay, so I think you would have a pretty interesting arrangement for your kitchen counter. All right. It's pretty heavy. Okay, now uh, we're going to go into the dining room and I think for the starters we will uh, use uh, traditional colors and I've used a pretty uh, kind of gray wash bamboo box. Boxes are pretty popular at the moment and I as you can tell, I like kiwi branches. I like just some rustic natural things. And this happens to be a piece of Harry Lauder walking stick. It uh, has all kinds of squigglies and, and I thought it could kind of extend the arrangement going down the table. I've greened it in with some boxwood some Wilson rhododendron, and some of our uh, buried eucalyptus as well. Of course, bright orange um, gerberas, the bueno, and then these beautiful uh, football mums. So I'm going to use those colors and add some other interesting flowers that maybe you wouldn't always see uh, in your Thanksgiving arrangement, like pimp cushion protea, but the color, you know, they're yellow and orange and they're, the texture is just phenomenal. So we're going to add a couple of the pink cushion protea. Look at their stems are curly, they're great. And then before I lose all of my space, I'm going to put in the, a couple little pumpkins, of course, right down here to spread the orange color around. And I've got my skewers in like you did for the other fruit and vegetables. And then I think we need another 
football mom here to give the person on this side a beautiful mom to look at. You know, you have to kind of spread the, all the flowers around so that everybody gets to see every kind. Be kind of like putting all the blueberries on one side of the pie if you didn't uh, put it, spread it around. And then I, I've used some um, ruffly mini carns to pull the yellow all around the arrangement. Uh, so, you know, putting too many big mums would be a little overwhelming, I think. So, start with the smaller ones. And then I, these uh, Alstroemeria have all the colors, red, yellow, orange, uh, and I thought they would just pull everything all together. So tuck those in. And so this is a pretty long lasting arrangement as you can see. Mini carns are long lasting, the mums are long lasting, the Alstroemeria is long lasting. So uh, you should have this from now until Thanksgiving or pretty close or that you could just replace what you, what maybe goes by. But I think the colors are spectacular. We'll tuck this in the center. I um, love designing with Harry Louder walking sticks, so I planted a little garden this spring, and my centerpiece plant is a red dragon um, Harry Louder, and it's a, called a red dragon because in, when its leaves come out in the spring, they're burgundy color. And, um, you know, I know it's not going to be, I'm not going to be able to cut them right away, but maybe one branch every season would work. Um, and I think we'll add some um, eryngium, some thistle to this too, just to give that little blue touch, like I told you, just makes things pop and adds another texture. Uh, it's kind of like uh, sea holly. A lot of you probably have sea holly in your gardens. I, I just moved to a condo, so I'm delighted that they've allowed me to plant some new plants that I can at least dream of cutting for design someday. So I think we're good. You know what? We're going to poke in one beautiful rose right in this spot. This one qualifies as um, food as well because the title of it is Cherry Brandy. You know, it's one of those... Uh, essential foods. So, okay. So I think you could have this on your Thanksgiving table. And then if the gravy's a little lumpy, nobody will care. So. Now, some of you maybe don't care for the fall colors, um, so I'm going to change it up just a tad at this moment and do a design with plants and flowers. Now we used to call that a po a fleur, you know, plants and flowers, but the Federation had decided that um, the po a fleur design uh, should be a creative design, and this one is more traditional. So this is a fun design to do because I started out with a croton plant in a four-inch pot, 
and I put a little block of oasis actually underneath it to raise it up so it was a little bit higher and it could be in the center of the design. And then I took a four inch or five inch pot, this was a pretty big pot actually, of um, ivy and I cut it in half and I put it in a plastic bag. Um, and you know what? It likes it in the plastic bag because it keeps it moist and you can just water it and keep it moist. Don't overwater it. Overwatering is the problem with this. So I put one of the plastic bags on one side and another plastic bag on this side. And I put it in a plastic bag because you don't want the dirt kind of getting in between everything else. Then I took my oasis and I cut it into like a triangle and put it in another plastic bag and then you wet the oasis. So the one that I already have in here is already soaked. And then you can add your flowers and whatever you want to put in here and you just water the oasis part. So I decided I would change up the color scheme because in this croton it looks more like a hot pink rather than red. Although some of the leaves are red, some are pink, some of them are yellow, so it's got all kinds of colors in. But I wanted to change the color a little bit so that if you cannot put orange in your dining room, you have a chance. So I, this is the, um, I like the fold over plastic bags because, um, you know, then you're not having the zip. And I picked out this beautiful mum that has sort of a deep, deep, deep burgundy center. And I'm just going to tuck in the flowers into my oasis. And you know, you can make some go up into the leaves, some coming out. These are nice long breaks. Coming out over the edge. And you'll have, when the flowers go by, you can just change the flowers and then you still have your plants. We did this in Garden Club years ago uh, for the first time. And I had one Garden Club member that was so excited about her uh, design that every holiday she would call me up and tell me what she did to it. So Valentine's Day, she put hearts in it. Easter, she put Easter eggs in it. And she would, uh, it was just so funny that she was so excited about how long this was lasting. And I have to say, I had, at that particular moment, put um, my croton in a bag, and I must have had that croton for a year or more until I probably put it in another arrangement. So it doesn't hurt to put them in the plastic bags as long as you, you know, take care of it correctly. So, uh, so you, if you have a croton, which is kind of upright, and then an ivy or a pothos or something that comes down over the edge of your container. You could also do the rectangular container and do the same thing and just put the oasis in between the plants. Um, you could do a round container. So it's very versatile. Because this one was silver, I liked putting some silver branches in. These are sprayed silver, birch, um, they're sprayed silver, to pull up the silver. And uh, for some reason, my uh, dishes have a pinkish rose on them. Uh, can you imagine that? Uh, and I, so I don't usually use um, the fall colors on my table, even though the fall colors are like my favorite. So, so I'm also putting in these sort of woven balls. These are wooden 
Um, you can buy those at Michael's or different places like that too. Um, to pull the silver up through along with the branches. And you can tuck these kinds of things into the dirt because they really don't need water. So, and then instead of your um, orange pumpkin, I like the white pumpkins. Um, so I'm gonna put the white pumpkin over here. And I've even been known to spray pumpkins gold when the season was over. So very long lasting. Uh, another interesting green that I use from my garden is the Lacosawee Scarletta, which is red, kind of pulls out the red, pinkish, reddish, burgundy of the uh, croton leaves. So we'll tuck that in between the mums. It's so beautiful at, at this time of year. Um, I don't know what happens to it in the winter and in the spring, sometimes it doesn't look so good, but most of the year it's just gorgeous and red and one of my favorites. All right, I'm not finding the, there it goes. So you have a very long lasting centerpiece right now um, with plants and flowers and it should uh, last you as long as you want it to so now let's get a little fancy um in if we were able to have a big party for Thanksgiving or anytime soon, or maybe we'll have to have a virtual party. We can still do centerpieces. And one of my favorite things to use are deco beads. And so they're easy to use when you just want to have, um, oh goodness. Um, a small centerpiece or a small vase and just put enough moisture in the bottom and it looks like ice crystals or something wintry or diamonds whatever your imagination wants and if you have some tables that you just need a little centerpiece on, like maybe a card table, this would be perfect. Or even if you wanted to put little arrangements down the center of the table, this is perfect. So now it's in moisture, I would add a little bit of water to the bottom so the stem could uh, touch actual water. And then I'm just going to put in a little green. Behind it, that's maybe a little bit too much. Um, yeah, just a touch. So that could go down the center of our table. And then We need, to, maybe we'll make a buffet table or this, you know, you could see through this, I think. So I'm going to add some more deco beads into these. And I have to confess that what I really wanted to put in here were lime slices. You know how signature drinks are like the, you know, popular thing now. So we could have cranberry lime aid or something. And then, but I've always said that flower arranging prepares you for life. You've got to be ready in case your flowers break or they don't come in at the flower market or you, you know, they wilt, whatever. So 
instead of using limes, I'm using little green hypericum berries because my color scheme is going to be cherry brandy roses and lime green. That's why lime slices were so cool. Um, but Lime would be a really, lime slices would be really good if you were doing this design, you know, for a summer party too, which we've had this past week. People are telling me they've had picnics outside, going to the beach, you know, it's been wonderful. But we're going to make do with our um, little hypericum berries. Now, deco beads, I buy them in a container like this. And you can hear them, they're like pinheads. Like if you were sewing and you had this little pinhead on your, your little pins that you put in the uh, fabric. Um, this I bought at Hobby Lobby. You can buy them online. Um, and I would say those were your best sources at the moment. I'm, I haven't been to Joann's, they used to have them. Um, I haven't seen them at Michael's, but who knows? Uh, but you can buy them around. So, um, and they're fun to work with. You know, the worst part is they clog drains. So do not put them down the drain. You would have to put them in the trash. I think the other problem with them is that they expand. So I put a tablespoon of the little pinheads in here and it fills it all up with these little squishy marbles. So I'm not really liking that because I can't see the hypericum after all. So I'm going to put some water in here. I'm going to move this away. And I think you can see what's happening. The deco beads are disappearing, but they're still there. Don't, don't think they went away. They're still there, you just can't see them. So the hypericum berries are kind of suspended in there, which is interesting, but you can see how the lime slices would have been fun. You can use lemon slices, you can use orchid blossom. You can choose what you would like to put in there. Um, and like I said, there is a problem in that they expand. So if I were to fill this up and set it on the table, tomorrow morning you might find that some of the little beads are on your table, on your cloth, or bouncing on the floor. So we need to do something to control these. And what I thought would be fun was to make a little grid out of wire I love aluminum wire. Ah, I also like bond wi bind wire, but I don't like it when it's bound to my thing. So this is what um, the wire looks like if you bought it in a package. And I just started to wind it around and around and around and then to uh, take the wire and come across so that I can make a lid for my base so that the deco beads won't escape onto the table. But I wanted my color scheme to be green, so I have the green, the green one done here too. And I have some hypericum and I have some beautiful calla lilies. And if I use this as my lid, I can also use it as my mechanic so that I can tuck the flowers through the wire rings so that they will stay there. And you can do this with anything. You don't have to even do deco beads. You could use a rose bowl and put this on top and, and put your flowers in so that you don't have to uh, fill the rose bowl pack tight, but you can kind of spread them all out. So I, I love the calla lilies, and I also like 
the way the wire curls around. So I'm going to try and see if I can convince one or two of these calla lilies to curl up through like that. So it's curled just like the wire. I think another one, some of them are too stiff, but oh, this one looks good. So I'm kind of like making a little bouquet. And putting it on to make my lid. So there you go. Um, gonna cut these short because you will see the stems in there. All right. And then I have some of the wire coming down over the side so that it secures it. So now I have calla lilies. Hypericum, this, this stem really came through, so it's uh, And I think, you know, since we started out with this, some rows, we'll add a little cherry brandy here, too. These are such a beautiful fall rose because they've got all the colors, and they work so well with the uh, um, fruits and vegetables because they have the pink and the orange and the yellow and the red. So it's like my favorite to work with. And I'm not going to fill it all up uh, because I like to see the wire and after all it's uh, kind of why I put it there. So I'm just going to Tuck in maybe one piece of green on this other side, right through the wire. You'll love it if you um, start working with wire and making your little um, mechanics with it. So now we have a short one. We have a taller one. And now we're going to go big. With some apples, some Granny Smiths, because like I said, my color scheme was uh, the green. And I have the green aluminum wire. I have the green aluminum wire and um, I think I'm done with it. I'm going to cut it off. Now, you know also from your Halloween experience that apples will float as well. So that's why I think a little wire in there to control the apples from popping out is also a good idea. I'm going to put the water in. Because, you know, when you put water, it makes everything look bigger. <laughs> Does it ever? Okay, so, um, see if this fills it up. Oh, that's kind of too slow. See how? Okay. So now we're seeing a problem. Our apples are going to float. So I need to remedy that. And the way I do that is usually to put an arrangement on top. 
so I've used a little plastic, clear plastic loamy dish and then used my cherry brandy roses, put in the calla lilies to tie this all together, the hypericum berries, and then my lime green mums. And having it be um, something, I wanted it to hang over, but not to, you know, hide everything. I've used the uh, seeded eucalyptus. And if you were to use this, as a buffet piece, you might want to put it on a mirror so if you take the tallest one the next size Take the tallest one, the next size, and then even the little one, and add your green apple here. They're so pretty. And then for a little extra pizzazz. We'll add some lights. So this would be perfect for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, for New Year's, for Hanukkah, whatever it is that you like to celebrate. You can change the color of your flowers. You can change the color of your fruit. You can remember to put limes in. You can use you know what else works really well is little crab apples, if you can find those, or lady apples. So all kinds of um, things that will float, you can do with your um, deco beads. So I hope you enjoyed some of these ideas. I hope you'll try them. And I wish you all very happy holidays. Thank you very much, Thelma. We loved your show. Loved it was fabulous. The decorating ideas were really great, and uh, I'm sure we're all going to be trying out some of your ideas. And uh, I hope we're so. very excited uh, to have you here tonight. Thank you. So, we're going to be raffling off our uh, designs tonight. Um, Susan Wilson Goucher will be pulling the names. I'm Ann Lundell. And we have everybody's names in this little bag. And we're so start with the front door. Okay. Arrangement. Right. So, Susan, let's see what we have. All right, for these lucky people that are gonna be the winners. Maggie Haggerty. Congratulations, Maggie. That's terrific. Yeah. Okay, so she gets the door design. Yeah. And the next one will be our fabulous, huge pumpkin, pumpkin. design. Okay, Anne. Jean Fitzgerald. Congratulations, okay. Jean. I wanted to mention that um, these items that we're raffling off, uh, we will deliver each item to the individual who won them. Uh, in the next couple of days, uh, board members will be contacting you and we will be delivering them to your homes. All right. Okay, now we're well, going to. This lovely piece with the, the Oh, peppers. the one with the peppers. peppers. I love that. All right. I love that. Sandy Giuliano. Congratulations, Sandy. Uh, that is a really neat one. I love that. And I love to eat peppers, so that's All awesome. All right, now for this gorgeous one here. Okay. Oh, that is such a nice one, okay. too. Okay. All right, Anne. See what we got. Karen Vitali. Congratulations, Karen. Karen. You have won this one. So we'll put that right, right there. there. Okay. Lovely. Going down the line. 
dig deep. Dig deep. Dig deep. All right. There you okay, go. Okay. Who do we got? Barbara Campbell. Congratulations, Barbara. I hope you enjoy this. It's Lovely. absolutely, absolutely Lovely. gorgeous. So I think what we wanted to do was to, we're going to take our last design and we're going to divide it into yes. two, two raffle items. One will be the tall glass vase with the apples. That will be one. The other will be the other two together. So yes, uh, which one are we doing first? The big one? The big one. Okay. The big one. Right in. Linda Farnham. Congratulations, Linda. So you get the big one, okay, with okay. the apples. Yep. And we've got one more. one more. So good luck, everybody. Yes. Okay. All right, Ann. What do we got? The final drum roll. Maureen Fields. Maureen Fields. Congratulations, Thank Maureen. Everybody. Okay, so that concludes our program. Thank you again, Thanks. Thelma Schoenman. We Thanks really enjoyed your show. It was great. And we wanted to give a special shout out and thank you to Josh Greenstein, who directed and produced this show. A lot of hard work went into this. I, uh, we really, really appreciate it, Josh. And we also wanted to thank his assistant, Matt. Uh, great camera work, Matt. It was really great. It was wonderful. Um, and the whole setup and, is fabulous. And Thistle Communications, where we are uh, right now in their studio. They are located in Pelham, New Hampshire. So thank you, everyone, and enjoy the holidays. <laughs>